Hello, this is my first teaching, teaching over Genesis chapter 1. This will be teaching of many different varieties of topics in the Bible. And uh, here we go, here's chapter 1. <clears throat> in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. So notice right off the bat in verse 1. Uh, if you compare it with many other Bibles, you will see that it says heavens, plural. So which is it, heaven or heavens? So King James is what I'm using. In the King James, it says heaven and the earth. So note that. Note heaven and earth. Verse 2. And the earth was without form and void, which simply means... Uh, Duh, God's beginning is creation. There isn't anything formed yet, and it's void of creation. And darkness was upon the face of the deep. A deep of what? Well, it explains. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. So the deep refers to waters. So there is darkness in the waters. <clears throat> And God said, Let there be light. And there was light. Now, what's not said here, but you can get an idea of who or what that light was in the beginning. Was it God? Was it Jesus? Who is the light of the world? Who was the light of the world? You know what Lucifer stands for? light bearer before lucifer fell i believe that he was the being created to be that light and if you don't believe that you can research ezekiel ezekiel described as uh, being perfect in the garden of eden the garden of eden wasn't created till later and then adam was put in that so anyways verse four and god saw the light that it was good and God divided the light from the darkness. And God called the light day. So simply right here he's referring to day as defined as light. So in this instance, the day isn't recognized yet as sunlight. Sunlight day. This is just light. Now remember the sun isn't even created yet. And the darkness he called night. Simple enough. And the evening and the morning were the first day. Now notice it says first day. Like I said in the many other Bible translations, it will just say one day. Now how many one days are there? It could be unlimited. How many first days are there of creation? Well, there's only one. This is simply stating this is the first day. That means there's no other creation before, no other creation after that is different. And the first day of creation, for God created everything in six days and the rest of the seven literal days. And God said, let there be a firmament. And this is the first time we're seeing the word firmament here. <clears throat> and we'll get to that in a second of what the heck is a firmament. So God said, let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters. Now notice, all there is is waters right now, and the waters is void of earth. Anything created, trees, mountains, whatever, you know, it's formless. That's my TV. So he said, let there be a firmament in the midst. In midst can be understood as like in the middle of something or in between something or s surrounding, making a pocket of the waters. And let it, let what? What's the it? The it is the firmament. So let it, the firmament, divide. It's doing a dividing action here. Let it divide the waters from the waters. So what you got right now is kind of like a simple ice cream sandwich sort of deal thing that you can see in your head. Where the ice cream sandwich cookies are the waters, one on top, one on bottom. 
and the firmament is the ice cream. That's just a stupid analogy, I know. Verse 7, And God made the firmament and divided the waters which were under the firmament. So you got waters under the firmament from the waters which were above the firmament. Waters above. And it was so. Oops. And God called. Here we go. Now what the heck's the firmament? Verse 8. And God called the firmament heaven. Ding, ding, ding. What's the firmament? Firmament is heaven. Simply described and explained by God here in Genesis. And the evening and the morning were the second day. Let's say you got evening and morning here. That's very, very detailed describing that we got literal like 24 hour periods in the evening and the morning. This wasn't thousand, a thousand years each day. This wasn't billions or millions per day. This is one day. And God said, let the waters under the heaven be gathered together unto one place. I think think that think about that for a second. Let the waters under heaven firm it be gathered together unto one place. So if you think of our globe, what shape does water take when it gathers into one place all by itself? A perfect sphere. So that's that's how I imagine like Earth, our Earth as we know it today, being formed first out of water, one big sphere of water. Dry land isn't even made yet. And notice how like they're trying to search for water out in the, the stars, you know, different planets, the moon, Mars. They're trying to look for water. Well, he only gathered water onto one place. It's saying here the water is not dispersed all over the place. And let the dry land appear. Oh, here's the first mention of dry land. What's, what did he call dry land? We'll figure that out in a second. And it was so. And God called the dry land earth. So he didn't create earth, the part that was without form and void yet, until he created dry land on day three. So all there was was waters and firmament, just space and waters. And now we have dry land, earth. And the gathering together of the waters called he seas. And God saw that it was good. And God said, let the earth bring forth grass the herb yielding seed and the fruit tree yielding fruit after his kind after his kind there's no evolution here of the banana tree becoming a soy bean or any of that nonsense they produced after their kind that's not to say that there isn't varieties within the kind look at all the different apple trees we have but it's still an apple whose seed is in itself. How awesome is that? Upon the earth, upon the dry land. And notice here he's not referring to our whole earth globe that we call earth today. He's just trying, calling dry land earth and waters as seas. There's no like one big global description. And it was so... And the earth brought forth grass and herb yielding seed after his kind, and the tree yielding fruit, whose seed was in itself after his kind, and God saw that it was good. In the evening and the morning were the third day. Where's my cat again? And God said, Let there be lights. Now we have plural lights. There was just one light. That's not from a sun, not from a moon, not from stars. So what 
on earth was this light. Like I said, I believe that that was first Lucifer. He was the light bearer. He was the morning star. But now Jesus, he rightfully took that place from him. And now he is the light of the world. So let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven. Now that's kind of strange because earlier God called the firmament heaven. But now he's saying in the firmament of the heaven. So I take it as firmament is just an open space. And now they've claimed it that open space that they made heaven. He's just saying let there be lights in the the openness of heaven. You know the, the space that he made to put these things in. To divide the day from the night. I thought he divided it earlier. That can get kind of confusing, I know. And let them be for signs, and for seasons, and for days, and years. So these lights will be for signs, like prophetic signs, and for seasons. Now we can tell how low the sun is in the sky, uh, what season we're in, and whether it's summer or winter. And for days, here's our 24-hour clock period. You know, usually like 12, 12 hours of day at the equator, 12 hours a night. And years. We even have a yearly clock. So God made a clock with these lights. And let them be for lights in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth. Well, here we go. Here we got God calling the whole thing earth now. The whole thing is earth. And it was so. And God made the two great lights. The greater light to rule the day. Which we know to be the sun. And the lesser light to rule the night. Which we know now to be the moon. He made the stars also. <laughs> it's kind of funny how it just states that. Pretty much it does. And God set them, the lights, in the firmament of the heaven. So in the, the open space, in the space of what is simply called heaven. The whole thing of openness is called heaven. To give light upon the earth, or the globe. And to rule over the day and over the night. And to divide the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good. So notice, God separated light and darkness way before he even created these luminaries. But now he's just setting them up to make an obvious differentiation between the two. Something that we can visually see and understand. <clears throat> In the evening and the morning were the fourth day. <clears throat> so notice how he created plants day three. So how on earth for a thousand years or millions or billions of years could those plants survive without the sun being made until day four? And God said, let the waters bring forth abundantly the moving creature. So now you got, you know, Adam was formed from the dust of the earth. But you got animals being created from waters. So watch very carefully. Let the waters bring forth abundantly the moving creature that has life and fowl that may fly above the earth in the open firmament of heaven. Now we're getting even more detailed about this firmament heaven situation that there's a part which is going to be open to creation on the earth. So that's where the birds fly in the open firmament. And if there's an open firmament, well, logically, you can, logic can deduce that there's a closed firmament. And God created great whales. Now, great whales doesn't mean just whales, like a beluga whale or whatever. It just means great fishes, great sea monsters, if you look up that, that word there. So 
just huge, great creations. The great mass of megalodon sharks, you know, all that stuff. And every living creature that moves, which the waters brought forth abundantly after their kind, and every winged fowl after his kind. No evolution going on here, except variances within the kind. That bird, an eagle, is still an eagle. An eagle will never become anything else. And God saw that it was good. Notice how it's good, it's good, it's good. And God blessed them. So he's blessing these animals, saying, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the waters and the seas, and let fowl multiply in the earth. <clears throat> And the evening and the morning were the fifth day. And God said, Let the water let the earth, sorry, bring forth the living creature after his kind. <clears throat> so on day six now here you have the earth, dry land, dust, dust of the earth, bringing forth living creatures. You got cattle and creeping thing and beast of the earth after his kind. And it was so. <clears throat> and God made the beast of the earth after his kind, and cattle after their kind, and everything that creeps upon the earth. So things that are bound to the earth were made from the dust of the earth. Remember, the things that are in the seas and in the air were made from water. And God saw that it was good. Now comes the interesting part. Human beings. <clears throat> and God said, Let us make man in our image. Notice the plural here. This isn't referring to our as in like angels. Angels are not made in the image of God. This is the first mention here ob with outright obviousness. That God is a triune God. You know, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. He's saying, let man make, let, let us make man in our image. After our likeness. And let them have dominion over the fish of the sea. And over the fowl of the air. And over the cattle. And over all the earth. And over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. Now today in this age, who is the God of this world? Who has dominion over this earth? None other but then the fallen one, Lucifer. Satan is the God of this earth. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry. My light got off. So God created man in his own image. Now he's saying God created man in his own image. Now it's going back to singularity, proving that God is one. But he is of three. Think about that one for a few minutes. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. Them? In the beginning, God created them male and female. So that's showing right there that God creates us in the beginning, male and female. There is no homosexuality or transgender nonsense or whatever, all these different LGBTQ nonsense going on. And God blessed them, and God said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth. Now this replenish in the King James, there's a lot of people that think that needs to refill the earth. Now if you look back in the, the more older uh, definitions of replenish, the first definition just simply meant to fill. The secondary was meant to refill. So don't get confused on what that means. And subdue it. So before the fall, we were supposed to be the little gods of this earth to have the rule over it. But now it's taken away from us. The curse is upon the earth. 
and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over every living thing that moves upon the earth. And God said, Behold, I have given you every herb bearing seed, which is upon the face of all the earth, and every tree in the which is the fruit of a tree yielding seed to you it shall be for meat now meat we're not talking about like hamburger meat we're talking about meat just simply means food and you can see here that we were to, commanded to be vegetarians <clears throat> or even vegans there's no mention of getting milk from cows or eating hamburgers we were meant to be vegetarians from the beginning, before the, before the fall. And to every beast of the earth, and to every fowl of the air, and to everything that creeps upon the earth, wherein there is life, I have given every green herb for meat, and it was so. And notice it doesn't talk about the fish. I wonder if... It, Fish were still eating other fish or not. I don't know. <clears throat> and God saw everything that he had made. So he saw all of it. Duh. And behold, it was very good. And the evening and the morning were the sixth day. So this creation, in God's eyes, was excellent. It was perfect. It was very good. But remember... The next chapter is to come. He created man in his likeness, which means we have free will. Not only just that, but that free will that he gave us, well, that's going to get us in trouble. All right, signing off.